We are on the adventure of the Bible. And remember, you have a tour guide, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1.4 said he is so much better than the angels. Hebrews 1.6 says, and let all the angels of God worship him. Colossians 1.16 says, all things were created by him and for him. So he needs the preeminent place your tour guide, the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to find that the Bible is about kings, kingdoms, thrones, who is on the throne, and people wanting to be the greatest, the greatest of all time, the GOAT, as they call it today. Like in sports, everybody's concerned with who is the greatest. You go to work, who? what are they concerned with? Well, who's the greatest? Well, maybe not at work because people's lazy, but most stuff, you got people wanting to be the greatest. But remember that in all things, we need to give the Lord the preeminence, Colossians 1.18. And you're going to notice a theme throughout the Bible that if a man will humble himself, then he's exalted. And if you exalt yourself, then God brings you down. And if we suffer with the Lord, we're going to reign with the Lord. So, remember that. Remember that key thing. If you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. You got to go down to go up. If you want to go, if you want to go down, then try to go up yourself. So, when you begin to study the spirit world in the Bible, the thing to remember is the Lord Jesus Christ is ahead of them all. He is the top. He's at the top. He is the greatest. Now, the Bible has so much interesting and wild stuff, and nobody seems to ever talk about it. They don't want to go on this adventure. They just want to stay on the same little road and never go any further. But remember, I told you it has everything that the movies have, everything your games have, everything that your books has, but it's so much better because the Bible's true. The Bible actually happened. The Bible is actually happening right now. And remember all the fantasy and adventure movies you watched as a kid, like Never Ending Story, that had those weird-looking creatures in there? Well, the Bible has that too. And I'm taking you back to the beginning I don't know if I'll be going in chronological order with this thing, just wherever the tour guide takes us, but right now I'm going to go back to the beginning. And remember, we were reading in Job 38, where it says in Job 38, 4 through 7, Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So that's a good look at the beginning. And a good look at the beginning will involve looking at the spirit world that God made. Here you see these morning stars and sons of God were here when God was laying the foundations of the earth. That was before Adam and Eve. So that's not people there. It's a spirit world. We're going to look at the spirit world. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to give you a tour. The Holy Spirit's going to give you a tour and show you Lucifer, the cherubim, seraphim, angels, and their fall. And, you know, I've done this several times before, but maybe you're new to the adventure, and now you're just starting. So I'm going to show you some things that you've probably never seen. In Ezekiel 28, 11 through 13, Ezekiel says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So this is talking about Lucifer, 
also known as the devil, also known as the serpent, the dragon. It says, he was full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. It says, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So Lucifer, it said, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. And remember, I don't know if you're familiar with that other series I did. It was, when I did this uh, study, it was called Lucifer, the first hast been. So Lucifer has to be in. At one point he was on top. Now he is a has-been trying to get his throne back. Now he's still light years ahead of me in power. But one day when I get my glorified body, uh, he's, he's not going to be anymore. And he's mad about that. He's really mad about that. So when Adam and Eve show up later on, after Lucifer got lifted up in pride, he is pretty mad about that too. And he was trying to get them to fall. And that's what he ended up doing. And you know what that reminds me of? Someone who's upset because they messed up. And they want you to go down with them. You ever had somebody that wants you to go down with them? That puts off Satan-like characteristics there. Or you got somebody who wants to do something bad, but they don't want to do it alone. That's putting off a Satan-like characteristics. So if Satan fell because of his pride. You don't want to walk in his steps. You want to walk in the tour guide's steps. And if you're walking in the tour guide's steps, you're just walking through the scriptures. You're going to turn away from all this stuff. You're going to turn away from the pride. You know, experience, they say experience is, is the best teacher. But experience isn't the best teacher. It's the experience of others. That way you don't have to experience it. You can learn from their mistakes. Learn from the mistakes of Lucifer. But he had precious stones built into him. And when we serve God with the right motive, we are earning gold, silver, and and precious stones. Isn't that something? So the devil, he had precious stones. He lost them. So the devil is trying to do all he can to distract you from earning those precious stones. He is envy himself. He is envy. He does not want you having what he used to have. You ever met somebody like that? They see you with something and they're envious about it. That's a Satan-like characteristic. Do you have that characteristic about you when you see somebody with something new, with something nice, something going, good going on in their life? Maybe they just won an award at work, and you're mad about it. Why would you be mad about something good happening to somebody? That's putting off Satan-like characteristics there. Anytime you're envying someone else, you have Satan vibes going on. Anytime you're trying to exalt yourself for your own glory, you have Lucifer vibes going on. Matthew 23, 12 says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. If you approach a thing humbly, then you're not going to look as bad when you fail. But Lucifer, he was missing the humbleness. It says in Ezekiel 28, 14, Thou art the anointed cherub. Not a fallen angel. He appears as angel of light, but when it came right down to it, he was the anointed cherub that covereth. And now look at this key phrase, And I have set thee so. It was the Lord that put him there. It says, Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. So it is God that puts you in any position of authority because he is the king of kings. He may give others rulership, but he still owns it all. 
Now, the devil tried to tempt the Lord in Matthew chapter 4 and said, I'll give you all these things if you fall down and worship me. You think about that for a minute. The devil is telling the Lord that he's going to give him all these things if he falls down and worship him. Can you imagine how prideful you would be to look in the eyes of the one that created you and say such a stupid, stupid thing? That's what the devil did. That's laughable. And Ezekiel 28, 15, it says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So God made him perfect. Lucifer became the devil. God gives you free will, and then he uses your choice. Just like Pharaoh hardened his heart before the Lord hardened his heart, but he used Pharaoh's choice and got, his, got glory out of it. The devil, he was made full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. No iniquity was found in him, but God used his choice. Iniquity was found in him. God finds the iniquity in you that nobody else can see. The Lord trieth the hearts. Your tour guide can see right into your heart. He knows what you're thinking about the Bible. Isaiah 14, 12 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? He was fallen. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. It says in Isaiah 14, 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. He said it in his heart. And the Lord sees right into your heart. What's your motive? What are you thinking about? Why are you doing what you're doing? So one day, way back when, God gave Lucifer a throne on the earth before Adam and Eve, and he was lifted up in pride and he fell. And notice his five I wills back there in Isaiah 14, 13 through 15. You see, he's a little self-absorbed. Are you a little self-absorbed? You're putting off Satan vibes again. You know, if the devil had a Facebook, it would just all... It'd be all him in, the, in his photo section. I mean, you'd be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And it's just picture of him. Picture of him at the aquarium. Picture of him at the ball game. Picture of him putting up peace signs. Every picture is him. You know, he's the type of guy that puts himself as his iPhone wallpaper. I mean, you get, if you got Satan's phone, he's his own wallpaper. You go to his... Uh, photo section on his iPhone, it's him. You'd be scrolling for a long time. It's all him. So, <clears throat> he's a little self-absorbed. So way back when, in the beginning, Lucifer was given a throne. He wanted to take it above God's and so he lost the throne. No wonder he's doing all he can to keep any friend of God from having it. The Lord is on top. But did you know he wants to make you a king? Revelation 1.6, Revelation 5.10, it says he's made us kings and priests. He wants to give you crowns, a crown of life, all kinds of crowns, a Bible believer's crown. Children's children are the crown of old men. You know, there's all kinds of crowns that he wants to give you. And he wants you to rule over cities. And the devil lost all these things. He lost his kingship. He lost his crown. He lost authority that he used to have. Now God still give him, God still allowing him to have some authority that, so that he can give out to people. You know, that's why he offered the Lord Jesus Christ himself the kingdoms because God's allowed the devil to obtain the kingdoms, but 
He's nowhere near what he used to be. And it's no wonder he's doing all he can to keep any friend of God like you from having authority over ten cities. He's trying to do all he can to keep a friend of God like you from having many crowns to throw at the feet of Jesus. You see, there is a motive for why your arch nemesis continues to do what he does to you. There's a motive behind him being the roaring lion, the adversary walking about seeking whom he may devour. You know, he's just, you, know, you think about it, such insignificant creatures humans are compared to the spirit world. There has to be some big motive. It's because the fact that God is thinking about us, being mindful of us, and wanting to bless us and give us all these things, that's the only reason why the devil involves himself with humans. It's not that we're special, it's that the Lord Jesus Christ is special. And whatever the Lord Jesus Christ sees as important to him, the devil would want to mess that up. It all goes back to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that's special. So therefore, the devil's mad at him, so he wants to ruin what the Lord, what's special to the Lord. So he fell way back when, way back in the beginning, he fell. And in Matthew 25, 41, it says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. He took some of the angels with him. You know that saying, you always, you always hear it, it's, I'm just hurting myself. You're never just hurting yourself. You always bring someone down with you. The devil wasn't just hurting, hurting himself. He was hurting all those angels that he took with him. All those angels that became his angels. Romans 14, 7 says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. If you're going to be like the devil and rebel against God, you're going to take somebody with you. There's going to be people watching you. There's, you got your children to think about. You got your wife to think about. You got your husband to think about. It's going to be not just you, but people around you that you care about. They're also going to rebel. He took some of the angels with him. So hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. But if you're a child of God, he says to you in John 14, 2 and 3, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. You see, if you go to hell, you're going to a place that's not prepared for you. But you're going to go there if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ. If you get saved, then you get to go to a place prepared just for you. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's our tour guide. You know, Lord, lead me and guide me. He's our tour guide on this adventure of the Bible. Imagine the tour guide one day giving you a tour of your new eternal house. And Jesus comes to your house every day. And then you go to see him every day. And, you know, remember back when you were lost and you watched that show, MTV Cribs, and they give you a tour of the house? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to give you a tour, most likely, of your new house. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it would be pretty cool. And those houses on that show were shacks compared to your eternal house. And I wonder if the devil had a, had a nice place back in the day before he fell, back when he was Lucifer, and then it got flooded and he didn't have any insurance. No wonder, no wonder he wanted to take out Job's house. He's like, well, I got my house taken. I want to take away Job's house. And now he's, he, you see, he's envying what you have. He's envying your relationship with God. He's envying 
anything good that God's given you. You see, he used to be the golden boy with all that gold and all that onyx stones and everything else he had built into him. He used to be the golden boy. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. But now he's, he's a has-been. So if the devil is a cherub, we need to find out about cherubs to see what he looks like. So we can learn about cherubs which would have also been created in the beginning. So we're going to learn about the spirit world. We're learning about Lucifer who was the anointed cherub. Now we're going to look at the cherubs themselves to not only learn about the cherubs, but learn about Lucifer because he used to be a cherub. So in Ezekiel chapter 1, Starting in verse 4, it says, I, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind. Now, when you see that whirl, word whirlwind, you need to underline it. Because that's a, one of those words that put you in a certain context. Most times, it's going to put you in a context of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes, he's coming like a whirlwind. You ever seen, obviously, you've seen footage of tornadoes? It's completely terrifying. And... That's what it's going to be like at the second coming. Way worse. Imagine the worst tornado that you've seen. I mean, I've seen this one where this guy was in his garage or something, and there was a car that you could see outside of the garage, and it sh and he, he showed the trees and everything outside of the garage right before the tornado came. After the tornado was over, the car was completely moved, and the trees were gone. It was insane. But that's the power of God. So a whirlwind came out of the north. That's where God is, the sides of the north. A great cloud, you know, when God shows up, it's with a cloud. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. A great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. Our God is a consuming fire. And a brightness was about it, not of the midst thereof as the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. So four living creatures. He's your four cherubim. They're alive. And God is the one that gave these living creatures life. These very powerful creatures that are really unique and strange looking and this was their appearance it says they had the likeness of a man so it's like they stood up like a man they got the likeness of a man so mostly when you see portrayal portrayals of the devil he's standing up like a man with the torso like a man how about you? Do you stand up like a man or do you only imitate the bad characteristics of the devil? You know, the cherubs stand up like a man and you, we there's a lot of characteristics of these cherubs we need to imitate. We need to stand up like a man. They hang around the throne of God. We need to hang around the throne of God. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Can you ima imagine how familiar these cherubs are with God? Been around God for thousands of years since they were created, never left his side. Now one of them did, Lucifer did, but these other ones, completely loyal. Imagine the loyalty of these cherubs that stuck with the Lord through thick and thin. We need that loyalty to stand by him no matter what. Through all the stuff that's went on, through the fall of Lucifer, through the fall of man, these four cherubs stayed with the Lord. Ezekiel 1.6, it says, And everyone had four faces. So you imagine these cherubs, and, you know, I, I, I think... Uh, good way to get it in your mind is you try to draw it yourself. I had my daughter try to draw it. I need to put the picture on here or something if I can find it. But it actually looked pretty pretty good, like 
what you might think it would look like. It's kind of hard to draw. Everyone had four faces. Not four heads, four faces. One head with four faces on it, and everyone had four wings. So cherubim, they have four faces. They have four wings, so they can see from any angle. No matter where they're standing, they don't even have to turn. They can just, they see everything from any angle. So no wonder in Genesis 3.24, the Lord placed cherubims to guard the tree of life. I mean, no matter where they're standing, they can see you. And that's another way we need to be. Ephesians 5.15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You walk, if you walk in circumspectly, you're looking from all sides. You can, you're looking all around you. You know, you think about the animals that God made. Lions have their eyes on the front of the face because they're the hunter. Think about that. You look at a lion, his eyes are on the front of his face. Uh, the goats and sheep, they got them on the side, sides of their face because they're the hunted. That gives them opportunity to see more what's lurking in the shadows what might be coming from the side, you see. They're the hunted. Now, me and you, spiritually speaking, we need to see from all sides because we are the hunter and we're also the hunted because we've got a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour, First Peter 5, 8. So we need to have, walk, walk circumspectly have our eyes on the front and have our eyes on the side too. Not just be like the goats and sheep, but like the lions ourselves. We're the not just the hunted, but we need to be the hunter. <clears throat> Constantly looking from all sides. Constantly be attacking the forces of darkness with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and trying to do what we can to win people to the Lord to defeat the powers of darkness. Not just the hunted, but the hunter. Walking circumspectly. Eyes on the side, eyes on the front. Now these cherubims, they had eyes on the front, eyes on the side, eyes on the back. In Ezekiel 1, 7, And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. So you look up a calf's foot, that's what it looks like, like hooves. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So their feet sparkling like the color of burnished brass kind of reminds me of the Lord. His feet were like as they, uh, like, uh, like they burned in a furnace of fire. His feet like under fine brass as if they burned in a furnace of fire. Old split foot is what they called the devil. Because the sole of his feet like the sole of a calf's foot. You never thought about that, did you? People don't even know he's a cherub. Yet they call him old split foot. And when they portray the devil, what's he got? Hooves. His bottom half looks like a maybe a goat or a some type of beast with hooves. But then he's standing up like a man. Got the torso of a man. Ezekiel 1 8, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. They got the hands of a man. You know what that reminds me of? The hands of a man should be hands that are busy, hands that work. And their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went, they went every one straightforward once again that should be like us we should be like them going straight forward not turning off to the right hand or to the left not getting off on the way of the transgressor not getting off into the path of the wicked staying on the good and narrow way pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus as for the likeness of their faces they four, so all four of them, their faces were like this. 
All four of them had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. So lion, ox, man, eagle. Now let's look at these. And each one, uh, you can find a characteristic of the devil because he used to be a cherub. So they got the face of a lion on the right side. Well, we've already mentioned 1 Peter 5, 8 says the devil's a roaring lion. It says they got the face of an ox on the left side. Well, the devil's more subtle than any beast of the field, it said. You know, he's a serpent, yet it said he's more subtle than any beast of the field back there in Genesis. That's because he's got that face of an ox, the sole of a calf's foot. Why do you think Israel worshipped a golden calf back in Exodus 32? And if you look up Molech and Baal, sometimes they look like bulls, sometimes. Uh, this is why, why you think the devil's portrayed with horns. Or you think about the drink, the energy drink, Red Bull. The devil's a great red dragon. Many times he's portrayed with uh, bull features. And what's their slogan? Red Bull gives you wings. The devil's got four wings. Or he at least at one time did when he was the anointed cherub. Or you think about the monster energy drink. It's got those, um, them three lines that, um, the one of th those lines represent sixes. So you got three lines, three sixes. And what's, it's called monster energy drink. And what's the slogan? Unleash the beast. Uh, I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. Pretty crazy. There's something about those energy drinks. And then you got the face of a man, and what's the devil? Like a man, he's intelligent, far more intelligent than us. And the devil is said to be wiser than Daniel. I always thought it was interesting that it didn't say wiser than Solomon. And it could be, just be because Ezekiel was more in the time period of Daniel and not in the time period of Solomon. You know, that during that time of the captivity and stuff is when Ezekiel was prophesying. So at the time, you know, Daniel would have been the, seen as the, the wise guy. But I just th always thought it was something that he didn't say wiser than Solomon. <clears throat> Could it be that the Lord gave Solomon so much wisdom that it even went beyond the devil's wisdom? But... That's probably crazy, something crazy I've thought of. But the devil's wiser than Daniel. So he's, the, the cherubim got the face of a man. And then the face of an eagle. The devil is compared to fowls, birds that swoop down and uh, take the seeds by the wayside. And he is the prince of the power of the air. You know, it calls him. And so they got the face of an eagle. And you just look up eagles snatching up goats and stuff. Man, they swoop down. They can get a hold of a goat or some type of animal and just fly away with them. That is completely terrifying if you think about it. And that's what the devil's like. Here, I am sowing seeds to you. And the devil's just trying to swoop down. And get them seeds so they don't sink down in your heart. So the cherubs, they got four faces. The face of a lion, the face of an ox, the face of a man, the face of an eagle. Ezekiel 111, thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. You know what that reminds me of? Lifting up holy hands to the Lord without wrath or doubting as it talks about in First Timothy. It says two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward. 
Whether what the Spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Like fire. You, When Jesus Christ comes back, he's coming in flaming fire, taking vengeance. And the likeness... And the light and like the appearance of lamps, and it went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. That's significant. And Luke ten eighteen, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So like a lightning, flash of lightning is what it was like. Ezekiel 1.15, and I, Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold one will upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. Four faces. So I remember, cherubim are not angels. Don't lump them all together because they're different. Angels don't look like cherubs when they show up. Cherub have four faces. What's the four faces? Lion, ox, man, eagle. They've got four wings. The sole of their feet's like the sole of a calf's foot. Sparkles like the color of burnished brass. They got the hands of a man. Now, you turn over to Ezekiel 10, and Ezekiel 10 actually calls these creatures cherubs. Ezekiel 10, 14. And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. Now you see here, the first face, the face of a cherub, it doesn't say the face of an ox here, so that shows you that the face of a cherub looks like the face of an ox. So the cherub's actual face looks like the face of a cherub. So the one class of animal missing is what? You got a you got a ox, you got a man, you got a lion, and you got an eagle. What's missing? The serpent class. The fifth cherub, the serpent, he fell, so they don't have the face of a serpent. Ezekiel ten fifteen, and the cherubs were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Kibar. And this is just speculation and something that you talk about with friends on a on a rainy day. Nothing that uh, you should get too worked up about or think too much into. But kind of makes you wonder if if when the de devil was the anointed cherub before he fell, if they did, if somehow the face of a serpent was was on him in some way, and then it just got removed when he fell. Who knows? Probably not, but. Just something you throw out there on a rainy day you think about. That's the fun thing about an adventure is the tour guide's okay with you asking questions. You know, you can ask him a question any time of the day about the Word of God. And then you wait for an answer. Or he'll, he'll take you down this over other avenue over here on the adventure and show you the answer that way. So Ezekiel 10, 15, and the cherubims were lifted up. And this is what he says. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Kibar. That takes you back to Ezekiel 1, showing you that these cherubims are those creatures that he saw in Ezekiel chapter 1. Now, other verses about cherubim. The Lord uses the cherub as transportation, 2 Samuel twenty two eleven, And he rode upon a cherub and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. How amazing is that? He rode up on a cherub and did fly. He, he doesn't need to ride a cherub to fly. It's just the Lord does awesome stuff like that. For dramatic effect, cinematic effect to get you to... Because we people, we, we really admire what we see. So you imagine the Lord himself riding up on a cherub. That's amazing. Now Solomon sculpted cherubs in the temple. And if the sculpted cherubs in Solomon's temple match the actual size of the cherubs in heaven, then they're around 15 feet tall with wings that are over 7 feet wide. 
1 Kings 16, 23 through 26. That's pretty amazing right there. Satan was a cherub, but now he's described as a great red dragon. And Revelation 12 shows you that the dragon, the devil, Satan, and the serpent are one and the same. Revelation 12, 9, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now this event in Revelation 12, this fall, I believe this is one of the falls that's yet future, that's coming in the tribulation, where, see, he's already the great dragon here. He's not the anointed cherub here. He didn't fail positionally the, as the anointed cherub. He fell from that position. And here he's, falling being cast down bodily and once he's cast down to the earth he's he's not going to be able to get back up so it's kind of like when those angels fall uh, like in genesis 6 you know they can't go back up they can't go back and forth from earth to the third heaven anymore like in jacob's ladder situation there they're bound to the earth and they, they're going to die like men and fall like one of the princes as it talks about in Psalm 82. But the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. So there you got dragon, serpent, devil, Satan. Right there, it's showing you all four, one and the same. In Genesis 3.14, it seems that the serpent had legs before the curse, before the before the fall. You imagine a serpent with legs, it would have made him look like he had a tail. So the devil is portrayed as having not only horns and hooves, but also a tail. And he's a red dragon. So he they portray him as red. And you know they they portray him with a pitchfork well, that's 1 Samuel 2, 12 through 13. You got these sons of Belial, sons of the devil here. The sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom, what the people was, that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. So a three-pronged flesh hook, like a pitchfork, these sons of Belial are using. So, that's the cherubim, that's Lucifer, powerful, amazing creatures. And there is a hierarchy in the spirit world. And I'm sure there's always been a fight there over who would be the greatest. And I, I mean, the Bible doesn't mention this that I know of, but I imagine that there's angels that want to be the next devil or be higher than the devil not only higher than the devil but the lord himself just like the devil does i i just have a hard time believing that there's not other angels i mean we know there's other angels that fell but i imagine they're all envious of each other and not just envious of god but envious of the devil's power and there's a hierarchy in the spirit world like in ephesians 2 2 it calls the devil the prince of the power of the air and John 16, 11, it calls him the prince of this world. And 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it calls him the God, little g, God of this world. In Job 41, 34, it calls him king over all the children of pride. In Job 40, 19, it calls him chief of the ways of God. Revelation 9 mentions an angel named Apollyon or Abaddon who is king over the bottomless pit jude verse 9 mentions michael the ark angel revelation 12 7 mentions how both michael and the dragon have angels that are under them the dragon and michael fought each other with their angels they were over group a group of angels in Ephesians 6.12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the 
rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. So principalities, powers, rulers, archangels, king of a bottomless pit, princes of the power of the prince of the power of the air, prince of this world, god of this world. You see that there's a hierarchy. There's angels with a higher rank than others. There's angels more evil and sinister than others. There's beings more spirit beings more powerful than others. And Michael the Archangel, amazing character. We won't get into him now, but Michael the Archangel. And he contends with the devil. But I'll tell you this, Colossians 1, 16 through 18, the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of them all. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. If he made the principalities and powers, he's ahead of them. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. You think the spirit world is amazing. Imagine the God that made the spirit world. 